y'all i know it's been a minute welcome back to my channel i'm so happy you guys stuck in there with me because it's been i don't even know how long since i posted but i'm back a lot of you've been asking me where's part two of chapter three and i have been slacking okay a lot has happened i mean in between that time kevin samuels died which I was really sad about because Kevin Samuels is how I heard about uh, Shah Razad Ali. So it was devastating to hear how he died and so suddenly. But today's a new day. We're pressing forward. We're going to keep living our lives with intention and with purpose. And I want to dig back into this book. You know what I mean? A lot of you have been asking me to say what my thoughts are while I'm reading it. So I'm gonna attempt to do that this time around and we'll see how we like the flow of that. And if you guys don't like it, let me know and we can switch it up. Also, you see I have a microphone. Hello, yes. I'm really excited about this purchase. I wonder if it makes a difference in how my content is received and um, the quality of my content as well. So I'm interested to see um, if this investment pays off. All right, let's dig back into it. There are certain qualities some black women have that are a sign to the black man that the woman is good material to try to make into a wife and mother. All black women are certainly capable of having the basic nature to become a good woman to the black man, but he must delve into her personality and perform several in-depth interviews if he is considering her for companionship, a live-in, or marital relationship. Certainly the considerations to be made should not be limited to or based on sex alone. Okay. Obviously, compared to the years, days, and nights in all of life's contests, the good times and the bad, mere sexual satisfaction cannot be the motivating factor when choosing a black woman for a mate. <laughs> the propagation of the black nation to ensure its performance and longevity must have priority over the temporary thrill emitted from the loins. From the loins. As said, any black woman can be transformed into a good wife and mother, but the job is more difficult in some than others. How much time and force the black man has to expend to create him a woman is dependent upon the level of understanding the black woman has. The black man must treat the black woman right and make her treat him right. The challenge is to subdue her and put her in her rightful place. And the responsibility is to rule the black woman and be in charge of her in a civil and loving way. I was about to say, like, I don't know how this sentence is about to go, bro. Subdue her, okay, in a civil and loving way. I can get with that. He must give her what she needs, which is quite different from what she wants. A good black woman does not come ready-made. The following hints are signs that a black woman will possibly make a good wife to the black man. All right, y'all. It's a list of 23 things. So let's get into it. One, she is attentive and a good listener. Two, she enjoys going partying but has an equally good time at home. Three, she will have a strong spiritual commitment that helps her distinguish between right and wrong. Four, she will be partially modest in her style of dress. Five, she will like babies and children and include them in her life. Six, she enjoys cooking and preparing special meals or treats for the black man. Seven, she will respect her parents, his parents, and older people. Eight, she has good personal hygiene. The fact that that has to be put in there, come on sis, do better. Forever doesn't have good personal hygiene, good. Come on, huh? Nine, she does not wear a ton of makeup. 10, she is proud of her man and claims him no matter who is present. 11, she keeps her house at least halfway clean. 12, she is not a flagrant spender and almost manages her money. 13, she is trustful and freely expresses, expresses her sexuality and desires when in private with her man. Message. 14, she shares voluntarily and offers help when she can. 15, she does not hold grudges too long and will apologize when wrong. 
16, she will go out of her way to do special things for the black man. 17, she will speak good of him when he is not around. 18, she will defend him against verbal attacks from others. 19, she does not show out or curse loudly in public. 20, she smiles when she meets him. We know that's a, that's a big topic in the black community. Women smiling. I don't understand why. It's not that hard to do. See? I do it at work all the time, you know? Even when you don't want to smile, it's like, so easy. Anyway, 21, she controls her anger and does not go wild when angry. 22, she will take instructions on some things without being combative. 23, she's respectful of black men in general. Now, real quick, I don't think this list is actually, it doesn't seem like it's asking for a lot. Although it was 23 things, Half the things should just come with you being a decent human being, in my opinion, but let's move on. The black women who choose to marry to have a home, security, and company, but do not wish to have a continued regular intimacy with the black man have amazingly worked out a lifestyle whereby they live with the black man in the same household, but do not have sex with him. They choose perfect opportunities to implement this program, such as one, immediately after she has had some type of operation or baby. Two, after or during some heavy emotional trauma. Three, after an accident of some sort or a back problem. Four, by claiming that intercourse is too painful. The black woman counting on the black man's ignorance of certain female medical problems will use these illnesses, real or imagined, to deny the black man sex. Some black women do not enjoy sex after marriage or hate the thought of it after having children, will perform all the wife, other wifely duties except having sexual intercourse. This marital agreement to live out the marriage without sex is strangely accepted by some black men. The women who practice this forgery ignore or pretend they do not mind their husbands seeking sexual gratification elsewhere. I'm not married, so I can't really speak on, you know, sexless marriages but i would imagine they wouldn't work for the long term but like i said i'm not married in other not as drastic couplings the woman will just pretend she's on her period complain of a severe headache or weariness play like they are asleep wait until the man goes to sleep before getting in bed wear bulky hair rollers and cold cream on their face or if forced they will consent but just lie there and be a non-participant in the act. All of this is done to discourage the black man from approaching her for sex. As a last resort, they make him beg for it and still say no. That sounds depressing, actually. Some of the women brag to each other about the tricks they employ to get out of having sex with their men. Since the full indoctrination of the women's rights movement, some black women have commenced to refusing to give up their maiden names to accept their husband's name after marriage. It is also another statement to demonstrate to the black husband that by refusing to give their family name and accept his as the tribal leader, they are exerting their individuality. It is also a public reminder to the black man that he does not own her. This system is especially popular among the so-called professional or corporate women. They believe they must maintain a separate identity in order to get credit for what they do. Dang. Every once in a while, a rebellious American black woman will marry a man from one of the African nations or the Middle East. Miraculously, she treats him like a king. She alters her wardrobe, diet, hair, or other to make sure she is in line with his requirements. The African man does not reign over the American black man. He is not better looking, and the African man is not more intelligent. The African just has another idea, so he functions on that. His idea, which is incorporated into all of his activities, is that he is the boss and the woman must do as, he's, do as he says. He does not deal with any doubt about it. He is firm and confident, at ease with the idea that he has the authority and superiority over his woman. By dealing out that mindset, he is able to be successful with the American black woman. It is not true that when opposites attract, they are able to live in peace and harmony. 
Peace and success comes from two people who are very much alike. People who are attracted based on similar needs and ideas. If the black man's woman disagrees with him on his basic principles concerning lifestyle, priorities, and goals, he will not be happy in his relationship with her. The black man takes a big risk and a time-consuming chance by assuming that he will be able to sway her to his way of thinking as time goes by. At first, the differences may seem amusing or challenging, but as the seriousness of life prevails, he will find that it is no fun being with a woman who disagrees with him. But the risk can be minimized by interviewing the black woman about her own ideas and finding out why she thinks the way she does. I agree. Black men could find out a lot about the woman they're with and black women if they just did their due process. But this is coming from somebody that's had failed relationships. And obviously, I didn't do my due process, my due diligence. So it happens, right? The black man must not be impressed with the initial behavior presented of the black woman when he first meets her. During the heated period of getting to know each other, the black woman will pretend that anything the black man says or does is okay. Yet later, when familiarity sets in, she will present the real deal that she lied about and explain fully why she doesn't feel that way at all. Love does not conquer all, and love does not make everything turn out all right, no matter how hot the passion. No matter how good the black woman looks or what she has, if she is not on her black man's side and supportive of, and supportive of him, then she is not his woman. Mm. The black man can tell which woman is his by the way she submits to his ideas and instructions and by the way she works to make him happy. His black woman should take the position that his success is her success, their success, and work as a team. It is reported that only one in four marriages actually works in the terms of longevity and happiness. The reasons why American marriage between black men and black women fail is threefold. One, hypocrisy. Neither the black man or the black woman are able to live up to the European rules and expectations of marriage. Both pretend to do what they know f full well is against their nature. Two, dishonesty. The black man, because of the uncompromising rules of monogamy, is forced to lie to his wife because if he tells her the truth, it will put his home in hell and jeopardize his peace. Three, disenchantment. The black woman mainly suffers from disappointment and dissatisfaction when her unrealistic dreams of marriage are shattered. She has been taught to expect the impossible, and when it does not materialize, she becomes despondent, and her disenchantment colors every aspect of her marriage. It does not turn out the way she imagined or the way she was told it would be, and she does not have a plan B, so she becomes hostile. Periodically, when the black man chooses the older black woman for his mate, he can relax a little. The older black woman, about 39 to 50, has tried all the tricks and games and accepts her failure rate. As we have heard, she is more at ease sexually, maybe easier to talk to, and is more patient and tolerant. While she may look adult and settled and has claimed she would never even consider a younger man, she can be approached. The drawbacks are that she will not want to bear children and she will not be an in interested in juvenile type activities and she may be shyer. She will also have a multitude of old problems she may wish to, wish to discuss or receive advice on. During this span of life, black women commence to lie about their age. On the other side of this group are the women in the same age bracket who remain inflexible in their ideas about what they will take and what they will not take off of a black man. They are firm and brittle in their attitudes and swear they are better off without a man. They masturbate or dismiss sex completely. This alone makes them bitter and hostile. They might return to school or take up a hobby or become submerged in church activities. She is considered by those who don't have to live with her a nice woman, a decent woman. She is full of stories of failed romances and bad black men who she has claimed abuse her without reason or cause. She believes herself innocent. The older, more mature black woman may do several things as a last attempt to hold on to her fading youth and beauty. She may wear heavier makeup, have breast or facial augmentation to improve her body form, 
and sadly, she tries to wear youthful looking styles of clothes. Whatever the younger people are wearing, she may try to wear it too. She will also try to fix her hair in a more younger looking style and reveal more of her body with low cut tops, shorter skirts, midriff blouses, low in the back front, low in the back and front dresses, high, high heels, shorts, mini dresses, and the like. She is easily noticeable and is generally commented on by onlookers with comments like, look at that old broad trying to be young, or she's trying to hold on, or she ought to be ashamed of herself, and rightfully so, she should. <clears throat> we know them. I mean, just go over social media, 39 to 50. Let's move on. The black woman when in this stage is very, very unhappy and has low self-value and is confused. She believes that the only way she can attract a man is pretending to be young, and she is mentally blind enough to believe that she can get away with it and that no one can see that she is old trying to be young. She thinks that how she dresses or dances will make her accepted by men. She does not know that each stage of life can be beautiful and content if she thinks right and behaves in such a way as to be viewed as beautiful. The older black women want to be young and the younger black women want to be old, so it seems. Woo! We're just getting started. <laughs> <laughs> I really love that I have a microphone. All right, she was breaking down in this next segment. Well, she's gonna be talking about the elderly black woman, which is ages 55 and up, and then we're gonna end it on the topic of divorce. And that'll be it for chapter three. All right, the elderly black woman, aged 55-ish up to 100. The senior black woman, if she chooses, can be beautiful. If she has taken care of herself physically, eaten properly, had minimum substance abuse, and had pleasant positive thoughts, she is beautiful. If she has had a man or still has one, she looks even better. If she has been a bona fide hellraiser, is disappointed in her man, her children, and her life, her condition will reflect that accordingly. If she is regretful of her life and has, and has bad memories and grieves over them, she will relate her misery to anyone who gives her an ear. Often the disappointed old black woman can be found in the community, in the community warning the young girls, don't let no man make a fool out of you, or all men want to do is use you, or they only want one thing. She might even further tell them, I didn't ever get anything out of it anyway. She is a sad sight. She will brag on how she always been headstrong and determined to do as she pleased. She did, and now she is alone. Sorry that her life has passed and wishing she had another chance to do it all over again. The ones of them who are married and have been basically happy for many years, who still enjoy the youthful benefits of sex, will be glowing and satisfied. She will dress better, take care of her hygiene better, and be pleased with herself and her life. She has pride and she is respected for her intelligent knowledge and advice to the young. The older black woman who is dissatisfied will have a face that looks defeated, weary, and worn. Her flesh will hang looser on her bones and she has wrinkles from her permanent frown and bad ideas. <sighs> I'm sorry, that shouldn't be funny. Mm, but the bad idea is, dang. Whew. She may be careless about her clothes, her home, and will talk to herself. A habit she develops out of loneliness or a breakdown of her mental abilities. Unfortunately, sometimes the older black woman will give negative advice to her granddaughters about how to treat their man. They advise them to live on their own. They advise them to live their own life. Don't get tied down to one man. Keep something for themselves and go when he goes. They might even explain to other young women about how they were such a good wife for 30 to 40 or 50 years and didn't get anything for it. It is not exactly plain what the older black woman expects from being a good black woman. There is no other reward except for the satisfaction of knowing she performed a job well done 
for a deserving black man and herself. The older black woman also sometimes thinks the modern black woman has more privileges than her because she has the option of doing worldly things other than getting married and having a family. She admires the idea of independence and wishes she had thought of it. Another group of older black women are equivalent to the dirty old man, and she is obsessed with sex, discussing it per se. The older black women can be just as rebellious as the younger ones. They watch and play a lot of petty childish games and complain a lot. She is also more prone to want to accept being elderly or infirm. She is quicker to accept the idea that she has already lived her life and now she can settle down and stay home most of the time. The black man clings to life to the very end and wants to enjoy the excitement and the activities for as long as possible. His woman will remind him that he is too old to do this or that and he should sit down somewhere and let the young people take over. She wants him to believe that he is old so that she no longer has to worry about him being attracted or attractive to a younger woman. Even in the older stages, the black woman persists in trying to block the black man from pursuing other women. It makes her bitter and vindictive. It makes him tired. <sighs> divorce. As we all know, the black woman becomes very vindictive and hostile when she's divorcing the black man. Generally, no matter what the reason for separation, she is not concerned with an amicable parting, and she is not concerned as to whether or not the black man has enough funds left to live on or to remarry and start another family. She could care less. Her attitude is that if he doesn't want me or did this or that to me, then he doesn't deserve to live. She wants him to suffer the kind of pain of rejection she does. If the only way to hurt him permanently is in his wallet, then so be it. Some of her stories of child support and living expenses are often exaggerated to fit the situation. She wants the black man to pay for not being with her. It should be mentioned that if the black man divorces the black woman, the reasons are usually not unfounded. She either did something or wouldn't do something. If he doesn't want her anymore, it's for a reason. A black man keeps a good woman who pleases him no matter who else he meets or who else he adds on to his life. And on the other hand, if she divorces him, the reason just might be anything. And there are too much to list here. Any petty or long range grievance is used to end what she believes is an unhappy union. While reasons of insanity, extreme jealousy, batterment, drug or alcohol abuse are considered justifiable, there are many other ones, mostly based on her unwillingness to submit to the man as the head. The sympathy always leans towards her. When the black man's family is weaseled away from him, often by persons he has no control over, sometimes it's the mother-in-law, ex-friends, her girlfriends, or a stranger, it is a very emotionally sensitive time for him. In this society, all of the sympathy and support is usually thrown towards the woman, especially if she has children. Little concern is felt for the black man when he becomes oust from a love and or marriage relationship. It is falsely assumed that he will be able to instantly adjust and fit in easily elsewhere. It is just as harrowing an experience for the black man to have to readjust and reorganize his life as it is for the black woman. He too has to first formulate and situate into an entirely new daily lifestyle that excludes his former mate and possibly their children. His tears and frustrations must be only shown in private, absolute privacy, when only he is present. It is not definitely known exactly what the effect of displacement is on a black man after he accepts the responsibility of being a husband and a father. When this is snatched from him, he shares the same outrage, the same pain, and the same confusion as the black woman. The black man, who believes in the possibility of having a good woman and a good home, is shattered when he must face the inevitable end of a relationship. Especially one whereas he has invested time and trust. Additionally, he is often thudded with the collapse of his rights as a full-time father. His pain on being disconnected from his children is heart-wrenching and unbearable, but he has to shake it off and go on. This is what is expected of him, and he has erroneously grown to expect it from himself. Try as he may, 
there are few cases where the father is awarded the custody of his children, and usually the court fight is a long and dirty one. Plus, it's expensive. He has to theoretically give up his children and hope that his ex-mate will keep his memory and presence alive and that she will be very careful in choosing another man so as to protect his children. If they are girl children, it is extremely difficult for him to maintain an attachment because girl children historically take the side of the mother. Boy children, while more attracted to the father as a guardian, are generally forced by the mother and the extended family members to, rem to remain with the mother also. Many of black fathers have to watch their sons crumble emotionally when he is raised solely by the mother. Often the children are caught in a tug of war between parents who are both vying for the child's allegiance. The black woman must understand that her pain is no different from the black man's and that he hurts just as deeply when the love has faded. Ooh, y'all, I, um, I also don't have any children, so I've never been married. I don't have children, so I don't know what that's like to, you know, go through a divorce and um, fight for custody for a child firsthand. But wow, what a crazy um, ending to part, I mean, ending to chapter three. I definitely agree with her on the list um, of things to look for in a wife. And I also believe that it is the man's responsibility to vet the woman that he's dealing with. Um, but also at the same time, we deal with a lot of women that are putting on a front and they're putting on a mask. And when she said um, not to take the first behaviors, well, some people can hold those those behaviors for a long time now. And that's scary. So I'm not really sure what questions men should ask to get to know a woman and to figure out if she's authentic or not. It really, I feel like it boils down to the values and how she's raised. Because, um, yeah, maybe meet her family early. And see, you know, how that dynamic is. Because nobody's going to tell you more than your kinfolk. You know what I mean? <laughs> But let me know what y'all think about this chapter. And I want to be married. And I would like to think that I fit most of those things on that list. I would have to ask my man, actually. But I don't feel like what she was listing was that egregious. I'm still waiting to get to the part of the book where people were just so up in arms um, about what she was saying. Because so far, what I've been reading has not been egregious at all hasn't been too far off even for our times which is crazy because this was published in the early 90s so she probably wrote it in the late 80s it's crazy but anyway you guys let me know what you think and thanks for watching and rocking with your girl and sticking with me for so long because <laughs> my content's been all over the place but i think i'm just gonna keep digging into this um somebody asked me if i have the black woman's guide to understanding the black man i do i will be reading that next so tell all your friends send this clip or not this clip send this link to them if you want them to get into reading this book or if they don't want to buy the book and they just want to get the synopsis of what's going on in here because I'm highlighting a good chunk of it. Like, I want you guys to know, like, when I'm skipping out on stuff, it's not, I'm not skipping out on too much. I'm giving you a good, good meat and potatoes here of a breakdown. So, yeah. Thanks for watching. I appreciate you guys so much. And you guys stay blessed. Bye.